respected dignitaries, faculty members, participants and students, a very delightful morning to one and all present here. On behalf of Department of Chemistry, Pondicherry University, it is my distinct pleasure to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you to the One Day Indo-Asian Symposium on Organic Synthesis and Medicinal Chemistry. Now, I would like to extend my request to the convener of Symposium, Professor Jayakuma Kandasamy sir, to deliver the conference address. Good morning to all of you. It's my pleasure to welcome uh, all of you to this uh, One Day Indo-Asian conference or symposium in organic synthesis and medicinal chemistry. I would like to extend my warm welcome to uh, our Vice Chancellor Professor uh, K. Tarani Karasu and Professor K. Anbalagan Dean School of Physical, Chemical and Applied Sciences and Chief Guest Professor H.S.P. Rao, Chairman and Head of the Department Professor Bala Manimaran and the Secretary of this program, Professor C. R. Ramanathan. The program is organized as a part of Indo-Asian uh, collaborative research projects that I have obtained in 2023. And the ASEAN, A -S -E -N, stands for Southeast Asian Nations, actually Association of Southeast Asian Nations, actually. The one can have the collaborations with these countries, the DST SCRB allows to make two years project through which the participants from India and participants from the foreign countries that are able to visit each other. So in this case that I have a collaborations with Professor Varindron from Cholalangan University, Thailand and Professor Ming <coughs> from National Vietnam University, Vietnam. And they have arrived a couple of days ago to this uh, Pondicherry University and they were actively participated in the department meeting and uh, meeting with the Vice Chancellor. And we have uh, this collaboration meant for the synthesis of small molecules for the treatment of diabetics and Alzheimer disease. And this is how we made the symposium name as an organic synthesis and medicinal chemistry. In addition to these collaborators, we have invited well-renowned scientists for this one-day program, Professor uh, Sagar from IIT Madras, Head and Department of Chemistry, and Professor H.S.P. Rao, who was a former professor of chemistry at uh, Pondicherry University, now he is uh, leading as a head for the TDS Pharma in Hyderabad, and Dr. C.V. Ramana, principal scientist from NCL Pune. And we have also invited one industry um, person, that Dr. Vidya Lakshmi, who is the director of Q Pharma Private Limited in Pondicherry. So this program is aims to provide a, a overview of the recent trends in organic synthesis, medicinal chemistry, and pharmaceutical chemistry. And there's openings in the pharmaceutical chemistry and the challenges and the scope for the students, basically. So over 200 participants have registered for this program and mostly from our, our department master students and uh, partially from the various other part of India. The students ranges from bachelor, master and PhD, postdocs and also some of the faculty members have registered for this program. I hope this program will provide you insights in the recent trends in organic synthesis in medicinal chemistry and you will enjoy it and uh, this will help you in your future uh, like uh, assignments and endeavors. So not taking much time on uh, giving more about this program, which you will be going through it the whole day. Uh, I would like to again welcome all of you for this program. And thank you for joining with us to make this program highly successful. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Your conference address has set the tone for a fantastic symposium. Now I kindly request the head of the department and chairman of the symposium, Professor Balamani Maran, to deliver the welcome address. Honorable Vice Chancellor. Uh, dean of this uh, school and uh, Professor Surya Prakash Ra, Professor uh, Ramanathan and Professor Jay Kumar, my colleagues and other uh, HODs and uh, research scholars and students and uh, dignitaries from the abroad. Good morning to all of you. It's my pleasure to tell us about the Department of Chemistry which is organizing this symposium. This department has has been started in the year 1989 and headed by uh, many eminent professors starting from A.G. Nair, 
Professor Jay Subramaniam and Professor Suri Prakash Rao, Sambasio Rao, Bidibushan Das, Professor Anbergen, and Professor Tarani Karsu and so on. And our department has the master's programs like uh, MSc Chemistry, and then we also had earlier <coughs> MSc Integrated Chemistry where we have the intake of 30 and then the, our MSc students intake is uh, 60. And based on the national education policy, recently we have also started the BSc Honors Chemistry wherein <coughs> the students have been given more of uh, exposure towards their uh, skill development. And our uh, master's programs currently which is running and it has ample opportunity for the students to do their, uh, uh, develop their uh, skill enhancement. At the same time, they have been given uh, a full time, one year semester project. It's one of the department which offers for the entire students to give the project at the master's level for the full entire semester. Full project, they do it. And so that they get the good exposure and then prepare themselves for uh, the industry needs at the same time. Uh, they can uh, excel in their academics. Our students, MSc, and then the later on the integrated students after their PhD, uh, they go for the PhD either in the pre institutes like IITs, ICERs, and then IIS Bangalore, and then national laboratories, reputed central universities do their PhD. And uh, many of us also qualify TOEFL and GRE, and then join abroad to do their PhD and excel in their academic career. And some of the PhD students, they also join industry and then uh, look for their career in industry. This is about our department and then the PhD students and then career. And then uh, regarding our faculty members, uh, that's one of the very big strength of this department of chemistry. All of our faculty members are PhDs. They obtained their PhDs from the reputed institute of this country. And then uh, they all did the postdoc either in the US or Europe or in the famous laboratories in the Asia. And uh, they all take uh, their uh, teaching as well as research activities uh, one of the prime uh, goal and then activity in the department. And uh, the department, I can see the faculty as well as the scholars along with some um, sometimes MSc students, they all publish papers. They reviewed the uh, international journals, exclusive international journals from American Chemical Society, Royal Society of Chemistry and Science Direct and Wiley VCS and so on. And then as of now, I remember that uh, about more than 400 publications have arrived, several patents, and uh, the faculties have funded, getting fund from the DST, SERB, CSIR, UGC, and other funding agencies, are also from some of the other foreign collaboration and other things. And uh, regarding our instrument facility, uh, this department has been supported by the UGC SAP, thanks to the previous heads and then current heads and the current faculty members, colleagues, uh, so that we have a good infrastructure facility. And uh, we have, this department is also supported by the DST FIST program where we have purchased uh, very good experiments like a uh, high resolution mass spectrometer. And then the earlier we had a single crystal X-ray diffractometer in addition to the routine like uh, UV visible, FTIR, fluorescence, cyclic voltammetry, CHN, analyzer, and so on. Apart from buying and procuring equipment, we are also good in maintaining and then offering service to our uh, uh, scholars, we also extend our service to the in and around uh, local academic uh, uh, colleges and uh, within the university to the sister departments in that way we also serve. We get benefit and at the same time we also make other students to get the benefit from the instrumental facility. And uh, our main strength is our uh, staff and then the faculty and then students. And uh, with this we s grow and then we expect for the still uh, better growth and we get good support from the university, uh, from the vice chancellor and then previous vice chancellor and then the administration so that we get the good thing in the, all the cases as well as the, the scholars are always given by the electronic journals getting from everything so that they can get their uh, literature updated. These are all the positive points of this uh, department and with this brief note I welcome all of you to enjoy this conference and, uh, and then they release the invited lectures and then enjoy your poster session after the lunch. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your gracious welcome address. To make this moment more special, I kindly request the head of the department and chairman of the symposium, Professor Balamani Maran, to felicitate our beloved Vice Chancellor.
good morning to all <coughs> abcde cde <coughs> the c and e block d how come c is chemistry e is education d is anything any problem yeah <clears throat> right very basically um <clears throat> the natural medicine is a very very basic one this is uh, obtained from plants most of the diseases that's what the d most of the diseases are being well obtained from very old medicines later the chemists started doing very important i mean research activities based upon that number of chemicals were produced most of them are giving good effect for disease and improves health okay so what is the activity of this chemical sir yes it's a good question structure mechanism and the amount of substance both are needed these are very beautifully done by the chemists every year <coughs> the pharmaceutical unit gives advanced level chemist for helping the people without this i feel it is very toughest job very difficult therefore not only synthesis of organic compounds and medicinal chemistry is also very very important area and it gives lot of help to the all over the world world health organization in 75 they started declaring what are the items that can be used what can be the amount all those things and 77 it was almost they concluded based upon this even now all the people are using organic compounds as medicines such kind of medicinal effects and basics all ideas are very beautifully explained by our chemist so i thank one and all uh, for attending this you try to improve your research activities so as to help all over the world thank you very much yeah respected uh, dean professor uh, anbaragan and the head of the department professor uh, balamani maran and uh, today's chief guest and uh, our former dean and hod of our department professor hsp rao and all the faculty members of this department and especially our uh, uh, collaborators from uh, chulalongkorn university as well as uh, national vietnam university and all the students research scholars ladies and gentlemen good morning everyone so today we are going to uh, organize as well as attend this indo asian symposium on organic synthesis and uh, medicinal chemistry i think it is uh, long due for our uh, department also to organize uh, uh, event like symposium or uh, workshop or the seminar so i am really happy to be part of this symposium at my own department and uh, that too also in the field of organic synthesis and medicinal chemistry so yesterday i discussed with the uh, our uh, collaborators from uh, national vietnam vietnam national university 
as well as uh, Slalangan University. So I have been to Slalangan University for one, one of the conference. So it is a, a highly reputed uh, institution in the uh, international ranking. So when I visited, I could see it is in the heart of the city and it is very difficult to enter uh, into the students as well as faculty to be the part of that uh, as a student as well as the faculty members. That is very high ranked institution and uh, I could able, I was uh, jocularly was telling, I could see everyone wherever uh, the, I met the faculty members there. All, all where they, con they uh, did their PhD outside uh, uh, Thailand and mostly from US. So why I am telling this is very reputed university and from there the, he has come here and also he is going to talk about uh, the talk about the multi-drug resistant uh, bacteria. When it takes the medicinal chemistry in the medicine field, our, the role of chemistry is uh, still uh, very important because it is not like I used to say to my students also, it is not like our uh, chemical approach where you have the rules then like uh, uh, SN1, SN2 or any of the uh, uh, mechanisms uh, where you have a, you can design your uh, molecules. You can design your molecule in a, such a way that whatever the uh, uh, desired molecule you can incorporate functional group all those things. But in medicinal chemistry it is not so. That is a complex uh, system. Whatever the pathogen you want to inhibit, to design a pathogen to uh, inhibit, it is not separately it is going to be there, it is in the system, in our body. When it is in the system, how to inhibit those pathogens, it is highly challenging. So in that, in that aspect, so there is no uh, uh, proper rule to design a molecule for a particular uh, pathogen. There are uh, certain rule which helps us like uh, Lipinski rule of 5 and then uh, uh, certain other labor rule all those things but still there are a lot of violations. So the Lipinski rule of 5 says the uh, beyond 500 molecular weight if the molecule if you synthesize that may not be suitable as a good uh, drug, but still there are many drugs which is even commercially available, but which is more than 500 molecular weight also. So it is highly challenging uh, which, which of the uh, part is going to play a major role, whether it is a molecular weight, whether it is the log p values, uh, whether it is the uh, functional groups or uh, whether it is the uh, non-covalent bond interaction, whether it is the nature of the uh, pathogen, all those things uh, it is uh, uh, very complex now. So uh, it is going like it is going like uh, the uh, trial and error method we are synthesizing now and wherever it uh, clicks we are uh, going ahead and then uh, we are synthesizing, we are commercializing. It is, uh, you can see it is still in the very amateur state to design any molecule uh, for the particular disease. So it is highly challenging in this uh, scenario our chemistry role is uh, very important. But uh, I do not know how many of you know recently uh, in chemistry as well as uh, the uh, other fields. Uh, the computational chemist playing a major role now. And uh, earlier, yesterday I was in uh, bioinformatics, so they told me that the when 1980s, 90s, when they attend this bioinformatic uh, bioinformatics seminar, 
the computational chemists used to be in the very uh, very limited even the center stage the hardcore uh, wet lab uh, scientists they don't recognize the computational chemist so they don't say you only design you only suggest but where is the solution but today we cannot say like this today their uh, uh, contribution is very high the the concept of artificial intelligence is taking a uh, very uh, center stage as well as their contribution is uh, very high now and uh, you, in fact i was telling there also yesterday the concept of taking the uh, taking the pathogen protein and uh, do the docking and then whether uh, whatever the molecule you synthesize already synthesized whether it will be it will be active or not that concept now slowly going away now the ai is taking care and uh, now it we can directly ask the through ai so what is the best molecule for uh, the particular uh, pathogen which will having more binding more inhibition properties so even uh, we can ask also if if not this what is the second best molecule like this the a is uh, is uh, going in the center stage and uh, the computational chemistry is also the theoretical chemistry also playing a major role so i suggest uh, students to also if you are interested in uh, the medicinal chemistry side instead of synthesizing and then checking whether your molecule is uh, is going to work for this particular disease you go the other way so use the ai model if you don't have the uh, the opportunity to know about ai ai better take some courses also about the the whether it is online or offline course and uh, how ai not only this this even a synthetic chemistry how ai can be used it is uh, uh, it is worldwide is changing the scenario so you take wherever uh, your uh, field is take the help of uh, a how best they can offer you so it is fastly changing every week there are new new uh, uh, updates in the artificial intelligence so i request all the researchers to uh, use this and especially the uh, medicinal chemistry so with this uh, small and very precise it is they have given only 10 minutes i think i am not uh, uh, crossing this <laughs> 10 minute so i thank uh, uh, dr jay kumar for bringing uh, the collaborators from the vietnam as well as the uh, thailand for this indo asian symposium on organic synthesis science and medicinal chemistry thank you one and all thank you sir for your informative and insightful address moving forward We are privileged to have with us our chief guest, Professor H S P Rao, Director and Scientific Advisor of TDS Pharma Hyderabad, and former Professor, Department of Chemistry, Pondicherry University. His esteemed presence adds a layer of significance to this gathering. We eagerly look forward to the knowledge you will undoubtedly share with us. I now invite Professor H S P Rao for the inaugural address. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, all of you. Good morning. Yeah. professor kati the vice chancellor of uh, pondicherry university professor k the dean school of physical chemical and applied sciences professor bm the hod head of the department current hod of the department of chemistry professor crr my good friend and professor jk professor yes <laughs> professor rv india ramana you know rp toka bks oh, i don't know in bakta <laughs> cs <laughs> and others and my good friends from oh madam victoria she is here <laughs> and my good friends from vietnam and uh, thailand interestingly i just noticed that the friend from vietnam is called thai <laughs> so it looks like so what are it maybe my dear friends students research scholars 
and other colleagues. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm a bit nervous here uh, because this is my first homecoming after 2018, July 30th, in many respects. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity. So I'll reserve the chemistry talk for the uh, evening, uh, the early evening. And right now, I'll spend my nine minutes, one minute I took already, already <laughs> you know, to tell you about uh, the importance of organic chemistry and medicine chemistry. Friends, you know, I have given several talks, maybe running to hundreds. Uh, every time I talk in the field of organic chemistry, you know, I feel emotional and jittery in many respects. Because I recollect uh, a story uh, which was uh, published in Journal of Chemical Education. I don't know how many of you read. I read that article in 1993 by Professor Charles Atwood. Read it if you want. It comes out for free. Um, in this uh, professor, who is a professor of uh, chemistry in the University of Georgia, in the United States. He's a physical chemist, not an organic chemist. But he writes about his son, who was very young, going to school. And one day, while playing, this young boy of fifth standard fell ill. And he was immediately rushed to the hospital. That's where the chemistry starts. That's where the medicinal chemistry starts and the chemistry starts. Because the doctors would put him immediately into MRI, which we all know is a metamorphosis of NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. Medical doctors wanted to call it MRI because patients would not get into that magnetic field because nuclear is a word which is not so good for the people. Therefore, they dropped nuclear and MRI, medical uh, magnetic resonance imaging. So MRI would not have come into picture unless so much of development took place from 40s to 50s to 60s, or even 1700 four-year. You know, four-year transformation that we know today would not be there unless scientists worked on it and discovered things. Then came the medicine. The medicines would not be there unless hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of organic chemists made the medicines in the first place, synthesized them. You know, starting from the ancient rishis from India, or the Chinese uh, medical practitioner from time immemorial who observed and wrote. In fact, Dean touched upon this, this observation and noting down and transferring the knowledge to generations. And the name organic chemistry did not even exist. But everybody knew about organic matter, that the matter which is in the form of life. If I ask you, you know, to youngsters who are out there, what was the life expectancy during 17th century? And what is life expectancy today? You know, we always used to say they had wonderful water, wonderful air, natural resources, good food, non-contaminated, and no pesticides. And what was the life expectancy? Believe it or not, it was only 27 years. And today, with all the problems we have in terms of pollution, in terms of water getting contaminated, in terms of modern lifestyles, eating junk food and junk food and junk food only, still the life expectancy in India at least is around 70. In the world, at least in the advanced countries, is around the 80s. Why? What makes this life expectancy go up? 
Well, one simple answer, medicines. And medicines did not come into picture just like that. I recollect the name of uh, Professor Berger. I don't know how many of you know this name, Berger, Berger's Medicinal Chemistry. Seven volumes, each running to 2,000 pages. One single man came out with Berger's. It's even now continuing. The editions are continuing, although he was not there. 97 years, Berger lived and then wrote this voluminous book of medicinal chemistry, Berger's Medicine. It's called Berger's Medicinal Chemistry. He writes that the medicinal chemist is a gambler because every molecule that he makes next time is going to be a winner, he thinks, and makes another molecule. It fails. Thousands and thousands and thousands of molecules are made and they fail. One of them come up. And that is the one which saves hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people. While it makes money for the companies which discover them, but they are necessary for the human beings to survive. So I would say that medicinal chemistry has brought into the core science a metamorphosis of organic chemistry. Well, organic chemistry would not have been there but for the beginning that was made during 18th century by Wohler. Synthesis. Unless we synthesize them, how will the medicines come into picture? Natural products were there, there is no doubt about it. But getting natural product into the pure form in a ton quantities to treat all over the world is next to zero. So we will have to make them in the laboratory. Either using biocatalysis or by really chemical synthesis. We have to make them and making them is becoming increasingly difficult nowadays. New ones. Because something called the FDA, Food and Drug Administration or the administrators put so much of hurdles before appeal is taken into the mouth. Therefore, I would say that organic chemistry is a central science. Those of us who practice organic chemistry will always want to say this. Chemistry being central science, organic chemistry is the core of it. But transport yourself during 1940s. Then you will realize that there was one man called R.B. Woodward who actually made organic chemistry before Woodward and after Woodward. Well, that took place because Organic chemists, generally speaking, because I am very much biased to organic chemistry because I practice that. They are extraordinarily passionate. I recollect our Sangaya, who was my batchmate at IIS Bangalore. He is no more. One year junior. He was working with a colleague of mine called G.S. Krishnara. Well, I want to tell about, uh, you know, you, I want to picturize certain passionate attitude by recollecting our Sangaya because at 12 o'clock in the night, he would sing loudly a Hindi song. Our Sangaya comes from Madurai. <laughs> Without ever knowing meaning of it, singing the song, not to sing the song, but just happy that he is working doing extraction, doing column, doing purification, looking at beautiful crystals. That's what moves organic chemists. No better side than as an MR, they say. You get a good MR, your boss is happy, you're happy. You get a bad MR, you're depressed, everybody is unhappy. So get up again and make a more pure compound to get up. So I just want to pictureize during this uh, nine minutes I spent <laughs> That beautiful world of making molecules, bringing them to the fore, making them useful so that humanity gets benefited. I must also tell you that there is a paradigm shift that is taking place in making medicinal chemistry because mostly during the past century we have been concentrating on medicines for human beings. But there is out there requirement of medicines for you know, animals. 
it is slightly different for each animal. Human being is one animal. So veterinary medicine and agricultural chemicals are also equally important. And I think there's a paradigm shift that is taking place in medicinal chemistry of late. Apart from Professor Katie has told very beautifully the importance of AI, but nothing can replace actual making of the molecule in the laboratory. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'll meet you again. Thank you. And it is time to thank the people who contributed towards this symposium to make it a success. First, let me express my sincere thanks to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Tarani Karasu, for his support from the beginning. And we are very grateful to the Indo-Asian uh, Collaborative Research Project funded by SERB to Professor JK for financial support. And we also uh, thank uh, Registrar Finance Officer for extending their support to run this event uh, successfully. And we also thank Dean of our school and head of the Department of Chemistry for their uh, inspiring and constant support. And I also thank on behalf of the organizing committee and the Department of Chemistry, the faculty, staff member of the department, research scholars, students of our university as well as the students from other uh, institutes. I also thank the head of the department, uh, Earth Sciences, for providing this uh, seminar hall to conduct this event and the staff of uh, Earth Science Department, they are very supportive and they helped us to make this event very pleasant. And also, uh, I thank um, EMRC, Pondicherry University, for providing media coverage as well as photography. And uh, if I miss anybody, please pardon me. Uh, that is not intentional. I welcome you all and I hope you will enjoy this uh, symposium for today. Thank you.